Blog Talk Radio. Hey everybody, welcome to Guardi, uh, welcome to Kingdom Justice. This is Courtney speaking, and today is our last day of the week, of course. And so, let me go over a little bit of what we've been going over. We've been going over so far three teachings of fighting fear to release your faith. Now, <clears throat> just in case of you joining us today, and um, I advise you to go over the other teachings. From one to, to one to three, and also, um, you know, to really check those out, to really play those, because what I want you to understand is that we're going to go through all these different steps in the next month or so. So we're going to go through the we're going to go through fear, fighting fear. We're going to go through fighting how pride can rob you of your anointing. See, pride can rob you of your anointing. You see, people people don't want to understand that pride can rob you of your anointing. And just to give you a quick example of it, self-righteousness is pride. So if a person in self-righteousness and they feel that, oh, I, I'm the one, I'm somebody, I'm the one, meaning this way, I'm, I'm the one that got rid of sin. I'm the one who got to walk around. I'm the one got to keep up with counting calories of sin. I'm the one got to be perfect, and you know, and, and I'm doing this and doing that. It's all me. See, what happens is that when you start doing these sort of things, then you start doing Jesus' job. Now, when Jesus died on that cross, that blood, what that blood meant was it was more than enough. That means the price that needed to be paid was more than enough. That means it was some left over. But see, what people forget, they, they, they walk around with condemnation, they walk around with all these sort of things. And when you and when you walk around with these sort of things that's 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 on you, you know, because the devil, see sin brings on the devil. So uh for certain people, um what what happens is that people get caught in these sins that they're doing and they get deeper and they get deeper and they get deeper in them. And so here comes the devil, you know. And then the devil telling you you ain't this, you ain't that, or the devil telling you, look what you did now. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get you now, or, 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 or I'm going to put this on you. Or people are afraid if I sin, God going to hit me on the head. You know, I did something wrong, pow, get hit on the head. See, just those little things right then and there cause people to just, you know, that cause people to come to nation. You know, uh, just being honest, I don't, I don't think, any, I don't care who a person is. I believe people sin daily. I, I think even when they're not trying to, uh, you know, we all fall short of the glory. I think even when you ain't even trying to, people sin. You know, people don't look at it if they they trying to hold it together. Somebody try to run them off the road, or 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 or, or, or they looking at somebody and say, "Look at her," and, and they judging her, or somebody sitting up there just just flirting. You know, a lot of people don't realize flirting is a sin. You know, uh, flirting and doing these things. A lot of people flirting with their eyes and flirting around and think it's all play and this, that. See, they're doing it all the time. But my question, my, my, what I'm saying is that when people are doing these things, do you believe that you lost faith? See, you don't believe your faith has went away when you find yourself flirting a little bit. You've been doing that's part of your personality you became, and that's something you gotta you gotta get God to get out of you. But see, you think it's okay. You walk in the faith, you believe in. You know, some of you are able to, you know, use your gifts and abilities, but some of these things you're still doing. And it's not causing you not to do it. Uh, you hear what I'm saying? So what happened is like I said, the devil, one of the tricks he likes to use on people is he wanna catch you. So he wants a reason to accuse you anyway. So what he wants to do to you, he want to make you think, oh, you sin, you stepped off the curb. Now I got you. So he want to make you think that, see, oh, you. So he want to put that fear into you that you got to be perfect. You got to be perfect because when he, when you do, when he try to put you in that, and you seeking everything of perfection of the flesh, and when you're doing that, what he's doing is, oh, you forgot to say your prayer. See, when he's doing that to you, he's trying to get you in self righteousness. Now you think, oh, I forgot to say my prayers. That I'm gonna be weak. Oh, I forgot to do this today. Oh, uh, my anointing gone. See, that's all designed fear. Now, I'm not telling you to miss your prayers purposely. No, I'm not telling you not to read the word every day or, or you know, uh, purpose, you know, on purpose not doing it. No, I'm just saying if you did, see, 
those are the keys of the things the devil try to take advantage of you. You see, he'll try to get in there and get yourself righteous because he gets yourself righteousness. You, then you're in the pride, and once you get in the pride, you and Jesus have no longer, you know, y'all no longer have a connection. See, now all of a sudden that voice of Jesus is kind of gone, and so you either either he's gonna come back to, to to straighten you out to try to get you in there to discipline you, or you're gonna lose that connection for a minute until you repent it out. You see. That's one of the things we got to understand. This is why God had what you call discipline or the rod or he did correction where he would come back to let a person see that, hey, hey, son, you know, uh, hey, daughter or whatever, you know, uh, listen, you can't uh, see. The thing is you and self-righteousness and you got to get out of it. You see, you lose all your connection. You're trying to say now Jesus ain't the one. Now I'm the one. And that'll put you out of that'll put you out of commission. You see, and um, that's why we're going to go for pride because we're going to see every area of how pride can try to get in and how they use self-righteousness. They sit at the dinner table with self-righteousness, and they're waiting, and they're plotting. And, you, I'm, and we're going to go through this, and we're going to talk about how you're going to shut the door on them. So, but we're going to get back to our message today. Our message today, of course, is part four of fighting fear to release your faith because we understand fear is one of the major weapons of the enemy to use to try to destroy your faith or to paralyze it. That's what fear does, paralyze. And that's what it wants to do. It wants to paralyze your, your faith because, see, you can't walk. If fear paralyzes you, you can't walk, then you walk by what? Faith. So faith is your feet. So if it paralyzes you or it puts you in the shock and paralyzes you, you can't walk, then you can't do anything. So you walk with God by faith, so your feet can't move because your faith can't move So you, because you paralyze. So this is one of the things that fear does. And we've been talking all this week about different, we've been showing different ways how fear can get in, how people can fear that they're going to run out, that, it, that, 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 that isn't, they're not enough, it's not enough for me. And somehow people can think that they're not good enough, fear can use this against you. So we're going through some of the, a lot of these things. And we're also going to go through some of this stuff next week. We're still going to be on this subject. So uh, bear with it and eat it and learn it. We're still going to go through a couple of these next week uh, because I want you to understand all the way. I want you to say, okay, when you're done, you know every form of how fear is attacking and how to deal with it. So no, no, there's no place better to go when we're talking about this than the children of Israel. You know, the Old Testament, you go to Exodus and Numbers. The Trinity of Israel was one of the perfect examples. Our Lord Jesus as well. Our Lord Jesus, every time he tried, every time he did a miracle, you know, he would, when he did a miracle, a lot of time he would tell people, especially, uh, he would tell people, people would like, oh, you know, someone dead, and he would say, listen, don't fear. See, don't matter how bad it may look. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about today. See, don't matter how bad it may look. No matter how bad that, that physical may look, and no matter how bad that cancer may look on you right now, she may look like she used to be uh, 100, 150 pounds, and now, you know, now she's 80 pounds. It, it, it may look like she, you know, he, 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 he's falling apart. It may look like his kidneys fell in. So it may look really bad, you see. I'm going to tell you this one real quick, and this is what happened to my dad. And I was telling people, you know, testimony about this happened to my dad uh, some months back. Well, he had found himself in a blood vessel broke in his head in a stroke situation. And, I, and, and, and my mom called, and she said what happened. She said, the dad's in a, uh, he's going to the emergency room. And I told her, it's okay because God showed me a vision that someone's going to go wrong here. And I was have to be, uh, he was going to use me to go up there and be the first one up there. And uh, to lay hands on him, he was going to be okay. So I remember riding in this car. Because, see, you got to understand something. You know, usually when you go pray for other people, I didn't pray for other people. Uh, people with dialysis, people with gallbladder, people with But, see, I had to go out here. Uh, and it, it, it's it, it get personal. You know, it get personal with people. But, see, I had no, you know, uh, you, you know your, your mind, like, oh, is your daddy going to be okay? But see, my, I shut the door. I knew, I said, he's going to be fine because God gave me the word. He's going to be fine. And I was riding there, and I remember God talking to me and telling me, he was talking to me, telling me things and keeping me encouraged. 
And he said, don't you worry about your dad. He said, that's my son. I'm going to take care of him. And so I went and kept everything and all rights. And I told my dad, I walked up there and he was in a, in a, in a, the ICU and um, they was, you know, probing him and they was taking tests and he was bleeding on the brain and everything else. And his head was hurting real bad. And I walked up to him and he can, and he was having problems remembering. He can remember a couple of our names. We can remember all his kids name and he was just suffering. And, and, and I remember I grabbed his hand. He knew who I was because he kept asking my mom to call me, show you how God is. So I, I, um, I walked up to him. I said, listen here, I'm going to tell you something. God said, you're going to be all right. You're going to be fine. You're going to recover from this like it never happened. And so I told him that. I said, you already healed. You hear me? He said, yeah, I know. I said, you already healed, but we're going to keep things in righteousness. So I took the oil, I took the bottle of oil, the olive oil that I brought, that I blessed already, and then I took the olive oil, and I put it on his head, and I blessed it, and I put it on his head, and I said, you know what, all the sin, I mean, any anything that you commit, any sin that you commit, you know, has been forgiven. You know that by me putting my hands on you, you, you have recovered. That's the word of God. See, if you call from the elders of the church. And you put you put your hands on them. You lay hands on him in the name of our Lord Jesus. That's the word. Now stick to the word. And uh, that's what I do all the time when I pray over people, and it, and it works every time. And so I put my hand on him. I, I, you know, I put the all on his head, and I say, "Listen, you know, you, you believe Jesus healed you, don't you?" He say, "Oh yeah, I know. He healed me." I say, "Okay. I lay my hands on you in the name of Jesus. You shall recover." And I said, any sin that you did, anything that caused this will be forgiven. And I went into that. And after that, I just backed off. I grabbed his hand and said, listen, you're going to be all right. But when you get out of here, God got work for you to do. The same way I'm sitting up here holding your hand in this ICU, God wants you to be holding somebody's hand in this ICU. And he said, yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, my dad, when I put the all on, I said that to him. He said, my head don't hurt anymore. He said, my head ain't went away. My head don't hurt anymore. Um, first, he kept saying that, you know, it's really, really warm. My head is getting warm. Then he said, my head don't hurt anymore. And, said, and um, he said, don't hurt no more. And um, I told him, I said, okay. Then, then the doctor came in. They said they was going to run the test. They wanted to run a test on him to see how bad his brain was uh, bleeding or what it was exactly. They wanted to run a test, and they wanted to give him uh, a medicine and run a test. So I told my dad, you can take the medicine. I mean, that's what you, you know, that's what they want to minister, but you, you're already healed. He was already healed. So they, so I waited around for them to take the test. But it show it got late. They took forever to take it, so it got late, and I was like getting early in the morning. I had to go, so I told them, "Don't worry, you'll be all right." When I got home, my mom said they took the test, and by the time I got home, because I had to drive about an hour away over there, by the time I got home, they t- you know they said the results of the test, and they said your dad, we don't know what's wrong with him. He was bleeding on the brain, but it's all gone. They was like, "There's nothing wrong with him. He's all gone." And um, we don't know what happened, but it's like nothing's wrong with him. We don't know what, we, you know, they was in awe because a while ago we thinking we may have to do this and do that. And we thinking the worst. And then all of a sudden they like, and and they didn't know what. They was in awe, like we don't know what just happened or what happened. And I remember telling that, that male nurse that was in there that Jesus healed him. So just in case if they each seen that doctor or they seen that they got bargained by it, uh, uh, that he will say, hey, listen, um, I don't, you know, maybe I ain't the religious person or whatever, but his son came in there, son, the man of God, he came in there and prayed for him, and the son told him that God said he was healed because the, because the nurse was in there when I was saying this. And um, so after that, they took the test uh, a couple of weeks. I mean, he got out the hospital like instantly. He was out the hospital in a day or so. They had him out the hospital, and then after that, you look at him now, I remember he going back for them to do a checkup on him. They say there's no signs of anything. And that's why I try to tell people, see, when you have faith in God, God won't let you down. You see, 
even though it looked it bad, is that the doctor saying, but you're bleeding up, you know, this, you're losing memory, you're saying stuff, this is wrong, you're trying to keep this out, you're trying to keep your words together, you're, you're, you're stuttering. But see, God heals. You know, and I told my dad that when I told him, I remember when I told him, I thought, Pray for him, and I told him, I said, listen, I want you to know something. Now, I remember I left this out, but I want to make sure this get in there. I said, it don't matter how bad it looks, you understand? I don't care if they tell you this. I don't care if you take the test and you fail. I don't care what they say. You are healed. My dad said, okay. My dad was very confident. He knew, okay. And you know what? That test he passed, there's nothing wrong with him. He's running around now fine. He even lost more weight and eating better and other things of that nature. So, I, you know, I tell you in a minute, you know, you, you know, you ain't got to get surgeries. You know, you just got to trust God. You know, a lot of times we don't trust God. We're trying to do a 911 call in. And sometimes we're trying to do that 911 call in. You're going to walk without faith and then trying to have faith in, in two minutes. And uh, and then if you don't have a man of God there, you know someone there with faith, a fake man there, um, you may then you're in trouble. You see. Um, so what I want to get you into, I just want to go ahead and thank God for that testimony um, um, about that. And hopefully that helps someone out there. Uh, everything everything we do is the edification of the church, to edify the church, to glorify our Lord Jesus, to glorify our Father. Now. We want to go into numbers because I want to show you how, don't matter how things look sometimes. So sometimes things can look real bad. They can look terrible. Sometimes things can just look all over the place. So I want you to see this. Now we'll go to Numbers chapter 11, verse 10. Now this is the church of Israel. Now they're out here, they're crying, they're complaining. They're crying and complaining. And Moses, see, Moses is taking the, 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 the back end of this whooping, you know, they they've been whooping on his ears and they they own him and you brought us out here to die and who are you and and so we're gonna go through some of this because see Moses is taking the whooping there because he got to keep on hearing it he got to keep on taking it and, and see after all that complaining and all that strife and all that you know it, it, it's starting to take a toll on Moses and see that's how that's and that's what the enemy want to do see sometimes it can be you know this problem happen another problem happening it's like you know, like domino effect. They all trying to happen because that's all the devil has left. So he's trying to show you, he's showing you. See, people understand the devil do that. He's not showing just like he got another card waiting. He's pulling all his cards because he ain't got nothing left. So he ain't got nothing left. You see, he have nothing left. But see, what I'm trying to tell you is that that can take all that when you don't handle that right and don't trust God. That can take a whooping on you. They put a whooping on you and see, that starts draining you, draining you. And then all of a sudden, you know what? You just want to get away. You want to run away. You don't care no more. And see, that's one of the things that, that that's uh, when people being misled, it, when you've been deceived, you get deceived so much, that's what happens. You stop caring. And that's what happened to Moses right now. See, he's been, he's been beat up so bad that it's starting to cause him to that fear. And he's fearing them. He's fearing the people going to kill him. See, he is so much stress on him that he, you see, he's been deceived because he has God Almighty that he's seen do every kind of miracle so far. But yet he still, all that is taking a toll on him where he don't care anymore. He's getting to the point where he don't even care. So we're gonna get to that. Now let's go to this. Now we in Numbers chapter eleven verse ten. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their family, throughout their families all at the interest of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, why have you treated your servant so badly? Now, see, look, see how they got him? He's telling God, how have you treated your servant so badly? See, now he's talking back to God. Now he's getting on God. Now he's mad at God. See, I've been there before. I didn't have things happen like that, especially being young in God. I didn't have things like that happen and, 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 and so much on you. And you thinking, God, what what's going on here? Like, how how are you doing me like this? I'm doing what you want. I don't understand what's going on. This thing's not happening. That's not happening. See, we 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 sometimes get into that because see, we didn't took too much. We didn't lost faith somewhere. See, 
our faith been hindered. These problems, the devil didn't got through the doors. And so he didn't use things to get through the door. He used problems. So this is what happened to Moses. Now Moses telling him, how can you do me like this? Now, he, now see, this is what I'm saying. Now Moses, now he's taking it out on God what the people taking out on Moses. Then he say, why have you treated your servant so badly? Why haven't I not found favor in your sight? Now, God already told Moses that he found favor in his sight before. But see, here's Moses saying, why haven't I found favor in your sight? That you, see, that you laid the burden of all these people on me. Now, God already told Moses that he found favor in his sight and that he would accompany him. He, he would, you know, he would, he, would, he would travel along with them. He would be with them. Now, Moses should know this. Moses should know this at this point. Moses spent for, uh, all them days, what, 40 days on the mount. See, Moses should know this already, that he found favor. But see, even though God told him this, he know God is a covenant God, but yet, going to keep his word. But see, that all that's happening, see, he's not thinking no more spiritually. His spiritually is over with. He's all flesh now. He's frustrated. He's mad, and he's taking out on God because, see, that's what we do. We start pointing the finger. See, I could have been, now Moses figured, I could have been still walking sheep around Midian. I could have been fine with me and my wife and my kid in Midian. But no, you had to pull me out here with these rebellious people. That is no way you're going to fix these kind of people. So this is Moses really frustrated here. Then he say, then Moses said this, did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them that you shall say to me, carry them in your bosom? As a nurse carries a succulent child to the land that you promise, see that the land that you promise on oath to our ancestors, where am I to get me to give to all these people? Now see, look at him now. Now he took God out the equation. See, he's saying, where am I going to get meat? Where am I going to get? Since when? Did, was Moses raising the sea? Was Moses doing the plagues? What, 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 what did Moses did, did Moses create the power to let the to let the to make the Pharaoh let him go? Moses didn't do no such a thing. Moses did no such thing. God created all the power. God told him what to say. God orchestrated the whole thing. God gave them everything they need. God break open the rock with water. See, God is going to see what's happened to Moses. See, he's, he, he's taking too much of whooping that these people are putting on you. And I'm telling you, it's people and problems and things that goes on in your head and your mind. They'll start putting things on you. They'll start causing you to think certain things. That's what the demons there for. They'll start putting things on you. They'll start saying this. They'll start saying that. And all of a sudden, you'll go back to the flesh. God, you know what? Why is this so bad? God, why so this? God, why so that? And see, sometimes you got to shut the door. So you got to shut the door. Moses should have shut the door. So there's a point where you got to shut the door on these people. Shut the door. Listen, I ain't hearing it. But see, Moses won't shut the door. He's leaving the door open. He keep listening. And some of you like that right now, some of you born again and you're dating people that's not of God and you're having all kind of hell with them. You're going through hell and high water with them. And you keep thinking God's going to change them and then they come back and their devil even worse than them. So it's a question you got to have. Either you're going to have faith in God going to change him or he ain't. See, and so some of us get caught in these friendships, the relationships, these family ties, and we're doing things just to, oh, please people. And see, when you're dealing with God, you can't please God and don't please the world. So you can't be a person that's afraid of conflict. So you can't be sitting up there saying, well, you know what? I can't say that to my boyfriend or I can't say that to my girlfriend, my wife, my husband. I can't say that to my mother-in-law, my, my, my mother. See, shut the door. Jesus said, you can't serve me with no faith. And if you don't shut the door, you don't learn how to shut the door, your faith ain't going to flow. You see, you got, you're going to have to get this. Moses won't shut the door. And some of us need to, you know, we need to shut the door. We can't let that bad character of that person keep corrupting us. You see, because people will sit there, ah, you hear some of these people, they're, they're preaching you big, big faith. But I'm telling you, if God wisdom, this is God wisdom, God wisdom say this, and this is God wisdom. If you hang around a dog long enough, See, if you don't change that dog, that dog going to change you. 
see, this is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is, hey, listen, I'm, yeah, I'm going to let you go over there to the next nation to preach to them and show them who, who I am by image. But, but see, when you're going over there lying with them, talking to them, hanging around all every day, and see what happened. Those people was getting changed. They had no faith. That's why God was saying that to them. Because, see, you can't just go think you're going to hang out with these people every day. They smoking weed and doing drugs and having sex everywhere and different people doing things. You're just going to hang in this all the time. Women have dress, men have. So you're going to hang around this stuff all day long, all the time, and think that, oh, well, it's okay. And think none of that stuff will rub off on you. I tell you one thing, the sex may not rub off on you or the opportunity of so much of it. The weed may not rub off the drugs. The money may not. But, you know, eventually those habits will. Bitch, you start walking around saying, you know what? It is what it is. It is what it is. So you're getting that habit from someone saying that. You're walking around saying some of the things that people are saying. You start to feel hopeless like they're feeling hopeless. So you think that the habits that they're showing in front of you, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't touching that alcohol. But see, you're falling for the habits. You're losing hope. Things like this can happen to you because you just took, you, you see, this is the wisdom of God. So you, you came in there, you got to trust God. If you're going to go in there, you got to have faith to go in there to change. You got to have the kind of faith and a favor to know that my favor go in front of me. So you got to go in there, you got to pray your way through there. You got to know you're going in there. You, you, you prayed up, you're faith in there, and you got to know you're going in there and nothing's going to change anything. You went in there and spoke the word, plant the seed, and did what you had to do. Pray for people, lay hand, whatever you need to do, and you get in and you talk, you, you did what you need to do, and you got out of there. You know, you deal with them how you deal with them, the, and, and meekness, and, and, and you got out of there. You're not supposed to lie and lie in there and see, because see what happened is, like I said before, the hopelessness, the other things, the fear that they have, the, the, the unbelief. See, a lot of this stuff will start taking its toll on you, and, and this is what happened to Moses. Moses is a guy with the Holy Spirit up on him. Um, he had the Holy Spirit up on him, and we're going to prove that he had the Holy Spirit up on him. But see, he's taking a beating here. And I'm trying to tell you, he's taking the beating, so he's not listening to God. He's not listening to the word, so he ain't listening to the Holy Spirit. Of course not. So Moses, right now, let's go back to it. We're at the 13th verse. We're, we're at Numbers chapter 11, 13th verse. Where am I to get meat to give all these people? For they come weeping to me, saying, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all these people alone, for they are too heavy for me. Thank, thank, God for, uh, thank God for our Lord Jesus Christ who said, my burden is light. I can carry the whole world in some. Thanks for God for him because Moses said he couldn't do it. Moses said, I can't do it. I can't carry it. Our Lord Jesus said, hey, listen, I can carry them in another one. Throw them on top of another earth. I can, I, I, listen, there ain't nothing to me. I can bench press. But Moses said, hey, I, can, I can't do it. I can't carry it. Now, Moses got two problems here. Now, now he now he got two problems here, but he's talking to the problem solver. Let's show how God solved a problem. Talking to this problem solver. Now, watch what he say here. Now we're gonna go over here to the sixteenth verse and see what God say back to Moses. God say say so. The Lord said to Moses, "Gather for me seventy of uh, of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of me, and have them take their place." Have them take their place there with you. I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take some of the spirit that is on you. See, we know he got the Holy Spirit, and put it on them, and they shall bear the burden of the people along with you so that you will not bear it all by yourself. And see, that's all he had to do in the first place. But see, sometimes, like I try to tell you, when you getting all this whipping from everywhere, all this overwhelming, you getting you know you're getting attacked from so many ways. You see, he 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 didn't he didn't went back to the flesh, and then not just go back to the flesh. He's frustrated. He can't operate in anything. He can't hear anything. Ain't no faith. He's afraid they're gonna stone him. He's tired of hearing it. He just he just this kill me already. He in that mode right now because that's actually what he said. Uh, I ain't good to that part, but he actually said. Just kill me by now. He just wanted to die, you know, because he did, it's just too much for him. 
And see, some of us like that, too. They just want to go back to the world. See, the devil put so much of a whooping on you. He used your wife to divorce you or put that kind on you. Your kids having problems and tearing up your home. You know, this is the last day. This is the last day, you see. People got to understand the last day, it was telling people not to even have children in the last days. That if you do, this is, it's going, see, this is going to be hard in the last days. You see, people like to think, well, well, we don't see where it's hard. It's hard because, see, the women in the last days don't want to be women. See, they don't want to be women in the last days. They want to compete with the man. So a lot of these women, they want to go out and get careers too. So the man have a career, now she want to have a career. Now we got two career people and her kids running loose. See, there's a lot of things going on here. The system and order of God, the things are all over the place. You see, and then we got a lot of these men here that don't want careers, don't want to do such and such. They're not taking care of their kids, babies, and this thing. The devil to manipulate them and thinking that this is okay. This is a fashion. This is a way of life um, that people shouldn't be married anymore. It should just have baby daddies, baby mamas, divorced parents. See, all this became the normal, and that's what he's doing. He's dividing the family because the family is strong. I tell people all the time, when people lived back then, when they had to work on farms, and things like this, they all had to depend on each other. It's nothing like it. Uh, I always say it's nothing like a neighborhood watch because the whole neighborhood get involved and everybody started to get to know each other. Everybody started to depend on each other. They started to watch out for each other because your kid is my kid, my kid is your kid, your house is my house, my, your property is mine, I got your back, you got mine. And then that, that carries over from just watching the neighborhood, not letting people in, not letting certain things in the neighborhood until, hey, man, listen, I'm having trouble with my business. I need a loan or my money. Oh, I've got you, Phil. See, that carries over. And see, we have to start seeing that. We don't do this in our neighborhoods. We got to start taking our neighborhoods like we like people take uh, took towns and villages and people took churches. You got to start, you know, look at the disciples. They're all in the church. Everybody sold their property. Everybody, we got to start taking this seriously. But see, we don't take this seriously. We don't understand because we're thinking, well, we don't see what's so bad about it. Yeah, something bad about it. The women divided from the man. She's trying to do her thing. The man trying to do his divorce rate up high. The children and so many single parents, daddy's not always home, so who's home? Mama's not always home, so who's home? Then some of them trying to have lives while they in this situation. See, I have this burden on me, but I'm trying to go out and have my fun, have my life, and let my kid deal with it, the burden of, of what happened from this. Now, what I want you to see here is that this is what's coming down right here. God solving one of his problems. And then God told him this, and say to the people, we in verse 18, God say, and say to the people, consecrate yourself for tomorrow, and you shall eat meat, for you have, um, he told him, you shall eat meat. For you have cried in the hearing of the Lord. Another, another translation may say you may complain. You may complain in the hearing of the Lord. Saying, if only we had meat to eat, surely it was better for us in Egypt. Now, this is what they keep telling God. So here, now, 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 what kind of gratitude is that? You would say they crying to God for four hundred thirty years. God come out and take take them out of there with power and style. He then took all the riches of the Egyptians and gave it to them. They they eat now. They now they now it don't make no difference down the desert. They sleeping on silk sheets. Uh, they dress around, walk around there in fine linen, uh, sitting up there in fine linen, waking up the gold under their pillow. But you know what? It, it doesn't matter because we want to go back to Egypt. We'd rather be slaves than to follow God. See, we'd rather be slaves than have faith. Therefore, the Lord will give you meat, and you shall eat. You shall eat not only one day or two days or five days or ten or twenty, but the whole month until it comes out of your nostrils. And become loathsome to you because you have rejected the Lord who is among you and have complained before him, saying, Why did we ever leave Egypt? Now, this is what God told him. This is the word of God. God said, I'm going to give them this. I'm going to give them meat. They're going to have meat until they don't want to have meat. They, they, they're, going to, see, they're going to eat so much meat until they can't stand meat. Okay? Now, let me show you something here, because this is very important here. Oh, it seems like time fly by. Um, this is very important here. Um, now, watch what, now, watch what Moses said to God. Now, God gave him the word. Go tell them I'm going to give them the meat. But this is how people do things. See, 
when something sounds so great to you, you see, you see, Moses already been beat down, so his faith level is low anyway. So he needs somebody with faith to come along and give him a hand. But see, because God, God gave him the word, but he, he see, he he don't he don't believe. Now I'm gonna show you what happens why his faith is not gonna work. But Moses said, "The people, I am." He said, "The people, I am with number six hundred thousand on foot." Boom! There you go. No faith. See, that won't happen. If God, see, if God didn't want that to happen, that won't happen. I Meaning, if that faith there had to happen off Moses, they weren't gonna get no meat. See, that's how faith works. Faith works. You take the word and say, and, 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 and you you accept it. You see, God said, Courtney, we're gonna have six hundred uh, things of meat. Uh, you know, for six hundred, we're gonna have six hundred uh, thousand quails for the people. I'm just saying this, and I say, okay, God. I tell them at once. See, if I said that, then fate works. And then I go down there and say, hey, people, God said we're going to have 600,000 quails tomorrow. That's what he said. Another thing, I need to find 70 leaders. Where y'all at? See, that's fate. That's fate. And I remember talking to God about this one before I did, we were talking about this, did this teaching. I'm sure how God do things because he's, he's very hilarious how he do things. Now, I'm going to show you how he did things. Now, me, I'm a person of faith. And in my life, believe me, I'm a person of faith, and as I go on, my faith increasing. And let me show you something God did to me. Now, I have no problem sowing seeds. This is the funniest thing in the world. I have no problem sowing seeds. I have no problem going out giving people money. I have no problem doing anything. I have no problem doing anything of this nature. I have no problem uh, help things, helping people or whatever. I'm going to show you how God showed how things work. Now, this is how God showed me how Moses felt because God asked God this when, when he was teaching me this. I said, God, I don't understand why this happened in the Moses. Like, why did Moses say that to you? You see, I didn't understand that. I said, Moses has seen you, God, raise seeds. He has seen you take uh, the do plagues. He has seen you do all sort of things. You don't want a battle you, uh, with, with people that weren't even soldiers. He didn't seen you, you crack, you know, he didn't seen you crack the ground, a uh, mountain and water come out for everybody. and was still more than enough. I don't understand, God, how could he fall at something like, after all the great things you did, I don't understand how Moses did that. So you know what God did when I said that? God didn't say nothing to me. He said nothing to me. He said nothing to me at all. I'm going to show you what he did. So all of a sudden, I found myself in a situation. So I only had $16 uh I don't put this way, I only had $16 on me in cash. And so my wife is really big on this thing. My wife is really big on this, this whole thing of uh, if you go somewhere like to a restaurant or a fast food or whatever, she's big on this, on this whole thing of pay for the person behind you thing. So she's really big on this, like, well, pay for the person behind you and then let them pay for the person behind them. Well, everybody don't want to, you know, agree with that. There's always somebody going to mess up the chain. But my wife's big on that. So what's funny about it, I was at the store, and I'm thinking to myself, man, I only got $16 in cash on me in cash. Now, of course, I had uh, money on my card, but I only had $16 in cash on me. And I don't think I had my wallet. I don't think I had this because I remember I just had, I was stuck in a situation where I just had 16 in cash, I remember. And I'm sitting here thinking, man, I only got $16 in cash. And then I got up to the line. It was a, it was a lady in front of me. I uh, seemed like a professional lady the way she was dressed, like she just got off work and everything. And she had a grocery, and the grocery told her, I'm paying attention because it's cream now. And it was like $53. And so uh, her stuff was like $53. And uh, it was a guy behind me. I never even seen the guy behind me just yet. But I'm going to show you how fate worked. God told me, he said, hey, pay for the guy behind Tell the lady right there, say, tell a woman there to pay for your stuff. Now, I only had... I remember I only had like a thing. I had a case of Zaka water that was like what three three dollars and I think ninety cents, and I had some uh, manwich or something that was a dollar, like Sloppy Joe manwich. I think I had that and that, and um, I'm not sure I had anything else, but I may have had one more item that was like a dollar or so. And he said, "Tell the lady to buy yours, and you buy the guy behind you." So when God told me that, the first thing I did was now I went away from faith. Instead of saying, okay, 
and tell a lady and then tell a guy back there, I, I didn't do that. I said, the first thing I did, for some reason, I turned around to look and see what the guy had. The guy had a big old bag of dog food. He had all his other stuff. I'm thinking, I'm counting now. Now I'm trying to count. I mean, he got dog food. That's a giant bag of dog food. That's a good brand. He got this. He got that. That's going to be past my $16. Then I'll be sitting up here trying to to pay for them, and then I won't have enough. I look like a fool here. And, uh, that came in my mind. Now, no, now, knowing that you got the mind of the spirit, so the spirit mind, the way my spirit mind works would be this. I only got $16. So the guy behind me, if I say, okay, I got his, his stuff, more than likely God wanted me to do that to activate where the woman in front of me would have probably said, oh, I'll pay for your stuff, and I'll pay for his too. Or it could have been, oh, I'll pay for her stuff. I pay for your stuff, and the guy behind said, no, that's okay. Please don't do that. No, no, no. He could have just said, no, he refused. But, see, I didn't, and I would have got my stuff paid and kept my $16. Well, see, I didn't do that like I would probably. I wouldn't do that like I would normally would do. I didn't do that. I said I held on $16. I said I ain't going to have enough. And then God showed me right there. He said, you see, that's what happened to him. See, once you start using logic, once you turn around and start, he said, it don't make no difference that I didn't did miracles all in your life. You didn't see me heal people. You didn't see all this happen. It doesn't matter. Once you turn around to the flesh, see, once you turn the logic and start counting, this guy got this, that, this, that, this. See, once you start doing that, then fate, then guess what? My whole fate was discombobulated. After I said that, I'm thinking, there's no way I'm paying for this stuff. I'll be better off. See, once you did that, you start counting numbers. And once you did that, you said, that's more than I have on me right now. And so the God showed me right then and there. He showed me that at the store. And I said, oh, man, I feel disappointed because I couldn't believe it. I said, I don't know why. I, I, you know, it's just $16. I don't understand why would it. But see, I understand God was trying to teach me a lesson. Then that's what happened to Moses. See, that happened to Moses. Moses started counting numbers. See, see, Moses went away from faith. When God told Moses, put your staff out over the sea, he put the staff out over the sea. See, he was, he was doing what God said he do. But when he got to this now, God said, okay, tell him I'm going to do this. He said, hold on, it's 600 and some thousand. See, he can't see that. He's going back to the brain, the logic. Logic, the, the flesh, listen, the flesh, logic is come from the mind. Man think logically. That's, that's, that, that's mental. That's the mind. That's flesh. That's not the spirit mind. That's that's the physical mind. See, when he thought he thought that way, it, it was already over for him. But see, look how far he's gonna go with this. Now he said, "I got six hundred thousand on foot," and you, he said, "and you say," he said, "and you say, I will give them meat that they may eat for a month." Or he say, "Are there enough flocks and herds?" To slaughter for them Now you notice this And this is the problem that I had too When God showed me this When I was talking about the 16 bucks Now he said Is it enough flock See he's looking He's looking For their things To be God miracles And I'm telling you From my own experience I'd have been down To my last hundred dollars I'd have been down To my last hundred dollars And God shot up I'd say man I'm down to my last hundred dollars I'd have been down To my last hundred dollars My last fifty dollars and you know what? As soon as it looked like, boom, I'm back up to, oh, man, I'm almost at 1000 Just like that. You know, God had brought in people with tithes or brought in people with offerings. And, you know, brought in people with offerings. Well, boom, right back up like that. God and came through with this and that, this way, that way. See, I, I, I didn't been in that situation where it's like, oh, man, I'm down to my last hundred. Boom, oh, now, you know, I started out today with 100 bucks, And you know what? I didn't have to take, you know, God didn't, didn't take this $100. He didn't have to take what I had left. He didn't have to take what's mine, but he added to it. He didn't need me to provide for me. He didn't need that little hundred dollars I had to say, hey, I need such and such. Now, if God told me to sow it, like if God say, hey, Courtney, sow 50. Now, God did that to me too before. He just say, hey, sow this certain amount of money, and I sowed it, and then I got more. Now, he didn't tell me that, and I just sowed only when he said, but most of the, a lot of the times, God, listen, I'm trying to just tell you from my own experience. God don't need what's yours. 
You could be down to your last thousand dollars, your last hundred dollars, your last fifty dollars, and God will bless you without even touching your money. You would think I was going to be two hundred dollars less. Now I'm two hundred dollars up. He don't need what's yours. But see, Moses forgot that. Moses started looking for, oh, God going to have to take from what's ours and make more. So no, no, no. No, he don't have to do that. See, he can do it any way he wants. Now, see, look at this. See, how many sheep uh, how many, how many sheeps are we going to slaughter? How many of our flocks? Now, now notice he said that. But what, but what did God do? God brought him quail. He didn't bring him no sheep. He didn't bring him no ox. He brought him quail. A meat that he wasn't even thinking that it was going to happen. You're going to sit up there and you're questioning God because he was doing that. And you see he's doing that because he's wondering, you know, what are you going to do? And that's like me. You got 16 bucks here. How is how God going to make that work? See, God didn't even have to take my 16. Like I said, he could have just went and got the lady to pay for mine and the other guys. And I, and I would end up coming out with 16 when I would have got my everything just because I went to do what, the, what, what he wanted me to do. I went to do the charitable thing. And just because of that, he he didn't did it. Well, see, Moses having an issue with that. Moses, see, Moses in the flesh. He's sitting up here uh, well, a whole month. I mean, how many animals? God now had to take from that. You know how to take from that. Now we're going now, now he now he he told God this. Let me show you what God told him. Now he said this. And he went through all this stuff. God said to Moses, He said, The Lord said to Moses, Is the Lord power limited? Now you shall see whether my word will come true for you or not. So other translations may say God told him either I'm going to do it or not. That's how you deal with doubt. See, people sometimes say God is going to come through with that water bill money. It looks real bad. It's getting closed down. You know, it, it, it's the day, and they say at 5 o'clock, it's 345. And so you got to shut the door. You got to shut the door. See, because the thing is, you got you have to shut the door, you know. A lot of times people don't do that, and, and they, they, they'll start getting scared. They'll lose faith. They'll break faith. They'll say, doubt to say, see, it's 345. You got an hour left. I don't see him coming this time. And see, you tell doubt this. Either God's going to do it or he ain't. Either he's going to do it or he ain't going to do it. I don't care if your, your water got cut off and then God ended up giving you the, 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 the money to get it reconnected and put and pay the bill and have enough to pay the bill next month. But sometimes people got to realize that. Now, we're going to go to the 31st verse of this. Then we'll see what happened. It said the quails. Then a wind went out from the Lord, and it brought quails from the sea and let them fall beside the camp about a day journey on this side and a day journey on the other side, all around the camp about two cubits deep on the ground. So the people worked all the day and night, all the night, the next day, gathering the quails. They say, uh, now, you notice that they had quails up to their eyeballs. They had quills up to their eyeballs. So God's word came through. Now, what were some of the problems Moses had here? See, some of the problems Moses had is this. Now, I'm going to get a little bit deep in here for you. We're going to get a little bit deep now. Now, hopefully you can stay with me and hopefully you don't turn the station. You don't get off. Um, now, I'm going to get a little deep with you. Now, let's be realistic here. Moses should have had more faith in God because he got to understand something. God told him, I am the Alpha, I'm the Omega. See, he has to understand, he's the, God is the Alpha, the Omega. God say what I see in the, uh, you know, uh, you know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that scripture. I want to show you exactly what he said in detail. And I want you to see this from God. Now, see, the, now notice that, I want you to, let's, Betty, let's go to Genesis, because I want to make sure all this scripture, because I want to make sure you get this. Let's go to Genesis 15, chapter 13. And the Lord said to Abram, Know this for certain, that your offspring shall be foreigners in a land that is not theirs, and shall be slaves there, and they shall be oppressed for 400 years. But I will bring judgment on the nation that they serve, and afterwards they shall come out with great possessions 
As for yourself, you shall go to your ancestors in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. Now, God told Abraham that what, now this is 430 some years earlier. God told Abraham that your people are going to be in slavery. So what we know, God already knew this was going to happen. God already seen this was going to happen. So therefore, God already knew the conversation he was going to have with Moses there. He already knew the people were going to cry by quails. So you know what? Was God already creating the, before the foundation of the world? God already got the quails ready. Okay, we're going to need a certain amount of quails. So he already got this ready. So he's saying, see, this is what Moses have to see. God already done it. He already got the quails ready. See, he already knew what's going to happen. He knew I was going to be in slavery. I got to go get them. And you know what? When I go get them, they're going to be begging for bread. They're going to be begging for water. They're going to be begging for meat. See, he already know what's going to happen. I'm just, we're going to show this. And that's what we want to get into. To show you. See, fear try to come in. And see, it try to put you in logic. Uh, how are you going to do this? You need to count that. See, I don't see. See, that, that, that's what it try to do. It try to take you. Away from faith, you see, that's his old job. See, it got, Mo- it got Moses out of faith. So we're going to go to Matthew chapter 21. Let's go to Matthew 21. And if you can't keep up with when I'm, uh, you know, I'm going through the scriptures, you can't keep up, just watch the show, but listen to the show back again. And, um, you know, take your time, listen to the show back again. I'm, I'm trying to slow it down as much as possible. Uh, we was going to go, it's the last day, so on the last day, sometimes I go a little longer, so. We may go. We're gonna probably go another twenty minutes, 20, 20, 30, 20, 20, 25 minutes. I don't know. We'll see what the law leaders, you know. So, man, we have Matthew chapter twenty-one, verse seven. Now I want you to see that. Matthew twenty-one, verse seven. So I want you to really, really, really get this. Now, it's talking about disciples and Jesus. Now Jesus saying, "I'm sorry, go to verse five. Jesus said, tell, uh, tell the, the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mount on a donkey and on a coat. Now, Jesus told them this. Then we go to verse 6. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the coat and put the cork on them and set on it, and, and he set on them. Now, Jesus told them to go get a donkey. Hey, go get this donkey. Go get this coke. I mean, my uh, coke. I'm sorry, this coat. So he told him to go get it. So he told Jesus told him to go get the donkey. Now you notice that Jesus told him to go get the donkey. Now what I want you to understand is how did Jesus know it was a donkey? See, Jesus knew it was a donkey before he needed the donkey. See, he said, "Oh, go get the donkey." See, at this point in my life right now, I'm gonna need the donkey so I can fulfill his prophecy. See, he already knew what was gonna happen. So please go get the donkey. The disciples like, what donkey? You know, what, what are you talking about? Go get the donkey. You see, he already he already knew that God already provided everything that he needed. He already knew God had this planted out. The whole Bible talks about Jesus being in the cross and everything's going to happen. But Jesus is an example, and his example is to show you that God has the same provision and everything for you, that God has everything set for your life already. When you was born, God have your whole story out there. So let's go to Isaiah. We're going to go to Isaiah 46 to see how, how powerful that the God we serve is. So we'll go to Isaiah 46. Make sure it's 46. I'm going to get caught in the 56. But it should be Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46, bear with me here, verse 10. And this is God speaking. I am God. There is no one like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. Okay. Declaring the end. What is declaring? You know, preaching. He's preaching, prophesying. How do you want to look at prophesying preaching? The end from the beginning. That means instead of like Genesis, Revelation. I tell people all the time, you want to know the truth about Revelation, go to Genesis. See, thing, everything's in Genesis. He said, I declare the end from the beginning. I declare the end from the beginning. That means God is trying to tell you he read the book. He read the back of the book and read up. Like a person said, I get the book. What part of the book you read? I read the beginning of the book. And I go, I, most people do, logically, right? Logically. 
or what we think flesh orderly. You say, hey, what do you do? I read from the beginning of the book to the back. God said, I read from the end to the back. To, see, he can do the opposite. I read from the end to the beginning because the end is the beginning. Oh, you hear me here? The end is the beginning because why? In the end, the new Jerusalem coming down. See, in the end, that's when this world really starts, when it really begins. This world here is just a shadow, just a shadow uh, of, of what God has to come. It's just a burnt pain. There's just just a, a pass of through. Um, it's just a it just it's it just a what do you say a flight? Uh, if you was on a flight, a layover. That that's all this world is. This world is just a garden where God is growing His crops. He's growing the kids that He's going. He want to put in the next world. That's all it is. This world is just a world that God's going to get His kids ready and assemble, and He's going to get them ready for the new world. Because that's the new bodies and the new world. That that's the eternal world. That's what he's trying to get us ready for. But what I'm trying to tell you is that God also wanted us to have that kind of dominance here. He's looking for us to have that kind of dominance here. Now, what have we seen? God say, listen, he do what? I declare the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things not yet done. Saying, my purpose shall stand and I will fulfill my intentions. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man from for my purpose from as far a country i have spoken and i will pass, i will bring it to pass i have planned and i will do it so god letting you know he's in control of everything i have a plan for your life and if you follow me it is already done it's a, it's a done plan signed sealed delivered I, you know, we have to start looking at that. When God told Abraham, I gave you the nations. When he told Noah, I gave you the world, he's talking to me. So he's giving me the world. See, when he said that I'm going to give you the nations, Courtney, okay, I got the nations. When Jesus said, hey, you, ain't, ain't you a God and Scripture can't be broken, Courtney? I'm like, yeah, I'm a God, and you're right, Jesus. Scripture can't be broken. See, when Psalms 82 said, you're a God, now do justice. You're right, God. He said, how long are you going to put up with the uh, – How God told me, he said, how long are you going to put up? With, 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 with the wicked, the unjust. I say, God, I'm not putting up with it at all. I'm not putting up with it no more. But I'm going to have to take your spirit and let's roll. See, I, I, see, I'm not putting up with injustice. I'm not putting up with it anymore. You know, we're not putting up with these sort of things. we child of God. You ain't got to put up these things. Like I told people before, Jesus was about justice and mercy and grace and love. We got to understand. We got to get that way. We got to get that way. He was about forgiveness. We got to start believing this. Jesus didn't care what what, what kind of what what came out of a person. Now what, now, what have we figured out here? That God. What we figured out is that God already knows what's going to happen. We know He already knows. It's already a done deal. He already got all this set out. He got all this plan. Everything you're going to need. It's already done. He already have it. He already knew Moses is going to need. He already knew they're going to have this conversation. He already knew that I'm going to need to have these quails, and not just that month. I'm going to have enough for a month. He already knew how many that he needed to have. See, a lot of times people are not getting. See, you're not getting the quails. So you need quails in your life. You see, it's something in your life that you just can't see how it's going to get done. See, th- th- this is the problem that some of us have because we thinking that we got to pray to God to make God manifest it, and God already have it. For every problem you got, God, what? He got the solver. Now, you notice, Ab- uh, you notice Moses sitting up there crying like he in fear. Oh, he let fear take hold of him because that whooping they put on. But you notice that he's sitting up there saying, oh, you know what? I got all these problems, and, and I just want to die. Just get rid of me already. I want to die. Now, these problems are so bad, he want to just give up and just, just bury me out back already. And God just that quick solved them. Okay, take this 70 liters. Okay, I'm going to give them bread. I'm going to give them quail. Look, that just that easy. And I'm telling you the same thing. God saying the same thing to you. Hey, listen, take this, this, and that. Oh, take this word right here. Take, take that faith. Okay, there you go. I'm going to provide everything you. I already provided everything you need. I already got the quills. You just got to wait till tomorrow. But I already have the quills. I had the quills before you existed. See, we just got to we got to start learning them. This is hard because people 
It's hard because we need to minister this more. We need to minister this way more than what has been ministered. People have been too busy ministering other things, and this is one of the reasons why the devil been taking advantage of the church is because it's things that's right in our faces. As God has been telling us, he have all these things. He have the provision. Uh, if you're a minister and you somebody, I, I got I to gotta shorten in my church. I'm going to tell you something that I believe. Uh, you know what? God, uh, Noah, didn't, Noah didn't have to, you know, Noah didn't have to go out. And I'm going to tell you this, and this may be healthy. This is what God showed me, and this is what I take and I believe. Noah built the ark. God didn't ask Noah to go out and get every single animal. See, God did not expect for Noah to go out and get every single animal by itself. He expected Noah to go out and get every single animal on the planet, two by two, clean and unclean a certain amount. He got, he got to go out and get all these animals and then build an ark that's gigantic to hold them. He has to try to do all this. See, God never told him that he had to do all that by himself. All Moses needed to do is build an ark. Moses ain't got time to build an ark and catch a plane all the way to Australia and catch a plane all the way to stuff that don't, uh, animals that only uh, migrate in America. See, Moses ain't got a chance to go catch no plane, cross no sea. You know, maybe God was using, to, when we say, uh, teleporting like he did with Elijah. Maybe he was teleporting them. But point being told, even if God was teleporting them, he was helping them. You see what I'm saying? He was helping them. And I'm trying to tell you, you're a church right now, you're a person starting, you, you, you ain't got a lot of people coming to your church right now. Listen, hold faith. Because I'm going to show you something. When you have faith with God and you're a man of God and you walk with God, God, one thing God's going to do, he's going to build up your reputation. And I'm telling you, when you're a son of God and you're a child of God, Noah was a child of God that walked with God. And God did a whole flood that wiped out the world. But in the same token, as it wiped out the world, Noah was saved and his reputation was forever documented. He, was, he gave him the world. So by giving him the world, he had to destroy the other half of the whole world. Guess what? He got it. If 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 um, you look at Moses, if Moses had to get his glory uh, by God going uh, taking out the Pharaoh and destroying all this for God to get his glory using Moses for Moses' name to be forever written, what happened? Then God created the Pharaoh. God created the situation. God see God did whatever it needed to be done. But he got he got them there. Same thing with Jesus. You, you got Jesus, but you got the Pharisees. He, 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 uh, he already got the disciples. When Jesus came off the thing, he already knew who the disciples going to be. He came. He came. Jesus came off. He already went to John and, and and James and Peter. He already went to these guys. Come on over here. See, he already knew who they was. He went and prayed to see who God picked. But he already knew who God picked. He just went and prayed to show you that you have to pray. Or you may have to pray, depending on your walk, depending on your faith level. You may have to pray. pray. So he's just trying to tell, keep you and you got to pray to make sure this is the right person. Even though you think you know, you got to pray. But he already knew. He knew Judas was a devil. So he knew everything. He already knew what was going on. And so that's what he was trying to show you. And I'm trying to tell you, you just have to believe in God. If God's going to build David up with Goliath, he's going to build me up. If God got to go get a Saul and a Goliath, to make me king, then that's what that's what God going to do for me. So what I'm saying is this. You ever heard that saying, you build it, he will come. You go out and you build the true ark of God. You preach this here when I'm preaching here. You go with the Holy Ghost, preach this and go further. And you know what happens? You preaching the truth, the true word of God, uncut, pure. You preach this. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You build this ark. And I don't care if it seemed like, oh, you know, it seemed like it's five more in the day, but it's another six. Listen, I don't care what it looks like. God's going to fill the ark. His name is out on it. He's going to fill the ark. He's going to fill the ark with people that's going to come in that's going to be serious. And he's even going to fill the ark with people that are going to come in that may even go, uh, oh, okay, they just come to church, but they come in yours. He gonna fill he gonna fill it up. He's gonna fill them up. You just have to trust and believe and always pray. Keep God in prayer. Keep yourself in reporting to God. This this belief. 
I don't care what it looks like. Now, I don't care if it looks like you got six members. I don't care if it looks like you got 10. I don't like, I care if you like you had 30 and 15 left. Just hold on and have faith and keep preaching the truth. God going to fill a place. He's going to fill you full of power, and he's going to fill a place. See, if God going to do that for Noah, he going to do that for Jesus. He going to set up a whole kingdom for David. He going to set up a whole kingdom for Jesus. He going to set up a whole kingdom for me. So we got to start seeing this. Jesus wants you. This is a big harvest. He wants you to have a full house. He wants you to have that responsibility. He wants you to do it. He just wants you to understand this is a faith-based job. This job is not a job. This is a career. This is a way of life. This is a kingdom. This is what we do. And for us to operate, we need to have faith in it because there's going to be things that happen along the way that you're going to need faith. If God just threw a million members to you, you wouldn't know what to do completely with it because when some things happen, when you need faith, that's the thing. When some things happen, when you need faith, you're going to have a problem. Look at Moses. Look, he got all these people with him, and some things are happening. It's time that he needs faith, and Moses can't do it. He's just too beat up by it. He's he taking too much. You see? So <clears throat> God had to show him. You see, God, God, God's going to get you right. You're going to get your chance. Don't worry. Just have faith. Hold on. Believe. And keep preaching the truth, and you'll see. God's going God's to come in your life, and God, God's going to come in. And God is gonna say, "Okay, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna build you up. I'm gonna build up your reputation." I'm trying to tell you, that's what He told me. I'm trying to tell you, I mean, and that's what He's doing. He's building it up. You see, He didn't already built it up. We can say He already built it up and done with it. He been done with it. Like I said, God already did. You got to catch up. So you the one catching up. Why? Well, you know, they always refer to God as lightning. And you have lightning in His hand because you know. And that I shouldn't have probably said that, but now I'm about to go into it a little bit. It's, it's the reason why God says that. I'll tell you this much. Go look up lightning. Everybody want to know the truth about that. Listen, there's things in the Bible. Look up the animals, the, animals, the traits of the animals, the reason some of the stuff will give you the revelation. Because the traits of animals is why God used the animals. You got to look at how the Egyptians did. They used to talk with animals. They mean things. That's why it says Solomon used animals. Solomon used animals. Uh, he knew the animals. They say he was real wise. He knew different sort of animals and plants because God is using cedar trees. Cedar trees, a certain kind of cedar tree. There's a reason why it's a cedar tree. He picked palm trees. There's a reason why palm trees. Palm trees, you know, uh, some palm trees, they can sit there and they can, like, uh, it, it could be hundreds of years, 600 years. They're still growing fruit. So there's a reason why God's saying these different things. God said, uh, uh, you know, a gazelle, because a gazelle is, you know, certain things about a gazelle, and not just one gazelle. Go look up all the gazelles, because it can be one of those types that you don't think. You don't just look up just a, a viper. You may look up a pit viper, or this, this, and that, or adder. See, these things mean something. You see, they mean something. There's revelation behind this when God speaks these things. There's revelation behind the names. It's people names in Hebrew that mean stuff. You add all the names together, you get a message. And it's the same thing when you look at things. You know, God used dogs. He saved dogs. Dogs are people. Pigs are people. You see, pigs are people. people pigs are known as what we people would call, I say, uh, you know, they call surface dwellers, which is another way you can call them earth dwellers. Another thing, people may call them clay dwellers, meaning that they, they live in the clay, they live in the mud. They, you know, they're all about the earth. They wall up in the earth. So every time when something happens, they look to the earth. It looks to every time something happens, it got to be a reason for this. It got to be a logical reason. See, they're always in logic. If something happened, guess what? That happened. Listen, yeah, but it got to be something in logic. And see, they, they, they don't look up to the heaven. They don't look up to God. They don't look up to the spirit, man. So, therefore, God say, don't cast your swine. I mean, don't, don't cast your pearls among pigs. See, you don't, you don't, see, pigs, you waste your time. Don't, don't, don't why are you worrying about hanging around with pigs? Why are you worried about hanging around with pigs that, you know, all they care about is what's on the planet, what's on the earth, and you see, they're they going to return to it. But see, you got to go there, like I said before, you got to go to with the power of our Lord Jesus. You got to tell Jesus, listen, you got to tell like Moses told God, listen, you want me to lead me, you want to put me in this wilderness, you born me in this wilderness, and you want to put me in this wilderness, you're going to have to come with me. And if I found favor in your eyes, Lord Jesus, to, to, to go out here so uh, you can get your glory and, go, and the Father get here, listen, um, you need to come with me. Because I understand that a man can fish. 
A man can fish, and I can have a lot of experience when I fish. I can sit there and know the fish usually be here, usually be there. But then some, but all of a sudden I'm going out there fishing, God, and I'm out here for two days. I'm fishing. I'm casting everything, everything I needed, everything I knew, everything I thought I knew as a boy. I'm using it, and nothing's working. The fish is not doing anything. And then all of a sudden, at your word, you say, just cast right here. I cast right then. I'm pulling them up, and I have not stopped pulling them. See, I have to go. I have to go fish with Jesus, because when I go fish with Jesus, we gonna catch something, and we're not gonna catch something. We'll catch more than enough. See, that's why we have to be, because when you go fish with Jesus, Jesus come fishing with power. With power. You see, and that's what the Holy Ghost would do with power. You see, some fish. You see, some fish you can't catch. Using that bait, you using that word, you know, some of that word you're trying to cast using. Some of that stuff don't. You tell a person, listen, God can fix this. They ain't listening. See, they ain't listening. You just casting. You know, God can hear you. Yeah, whatever. They ain't. You just casting. They they won't bite. And all of a sudden, you say, look at me, and look at me, and they look in your eyes, and you get their attention, and you say, in the name of Jesus, you stand up and walk. And they just get up and walk and say, whoa, see, power. Better get their attention. You'll catch many fish with power. That's the whole thing about it, with power and faith in the word. This is this is the word of God is is the word of power. Now this is one of the things I want to say before I end is I want people to see that now we've seen how we done went almost an hour now, we've seen how fear can get in and cause a person like Moses, a person who walked with God, was a veteran, as we would say. And how we see how that fear got in and it was just causing problems and how fear can use people to say, you ain't, you, you what you did was wrong and we hate you for it and we should have did this and we should have did that. They, they want to put doubt into you. They want to put, why am I here? Why me? They want you to hate you living you. They want to hate you, you are who you are. They want to hate that you look the way you look. They want to hate everything about you. They want to put all that into you, all that fear, all that doubt, all that, and then they want you to reason. Thinking reason, thinking logically, like they are. So we're gonna go to one. We're gonna go one more scripture. We're gonna go to First Corinthians, chapter two. I think I made a salary, but chapter two, verse. Uh, I'm not mistaken. Fourteen, verse fourteen. Make sure. Chapter two, verse fourteen. Let me make sure that's the right verse right there. Oh yeah, I'm gonna okay. It's the right verse. I'm just in the wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong thing. I'm in Colossians. I don't know how that happened. I got so excited. I got so excited here. Oh yeah, here we go. Now this is what Paul said in, in First Corinthians verse uh, uh, chapter two, verse fourteen. Those who those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's spirit for they are foolish to them and they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Now I want you to see that those who are unspiritual, unspiritual, I think we went over this the other day, unbelievers, those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's spirit. So the gifts that God let out, we ain't talking about just, see, I'm going to show you something. We're not just talking about the gift of prophecy. We're not talking about just the gift of prophecy. We're talking about the gift of speaking in tongues. We're not talking about even just certain things of, of wisdom and understanding and just just those things. We're not just talking about those gifts. We're talking about the gifts of salvation. We're talking about everything that come along with it. We talking about the riches, the um, the the riches, the blessing, I N G, the blessing. We talking about that. We talking about being blessed. We talking about God as our shield. You know, God is our referee. We talking about protection by angels, full blast. We talking about God is controlling these angels to uh, through His Word as we speaking it to have these angels taking care of us night and day. We talking about faith as a servant to us that goes out as a servant. You have to see them as a servant, sending them out to do your bidding or whatever you want. Because just like God say, I send my faith out. And what He said earlier when we was reading, He said, "Listen, everything I speak come to pass." 
See, when I plan, I back up. And see, that's the way we got to do. What I speak, my faith in God going to back it up. You see, we got to understand. What I spoke, I put my faith out, and my faith in God going to back it up. See, it's going to come to pass. We 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 have to get like God. See, we can't sit there and say we Christ like and we, and, <laughs> and we we way away from him. See, we got to get up close to him. We can't sit back and put him. We can't put Jesus on a pedestal that we can't touch. He never meant for that. He never meant for that. He told you. He said, even though your master is your master, but you're supposed to be just as your master. See, your teacher, I'm your teacher, but you're supposed to be just as your teacher. You're not supposed to surpass him, but you're supposed to know just everything he knows. So you're supposed to be close to Jesus. You ain't supposed to be far away from him. Jesus at the right hand, you're supposed to be right there next to him. You ain't supposed to be running from him. You ain't supposed to be what Jesus way up here. I'm way away. So that's not what he was looking for. Jesus looking for someone to say, hey, I conquered. He said, I conquered through you, Jesus. I'm here. I'm right next to you. Stephen ain't played that. You see in Acts, you see in Acts, you go into Acts, you see Stephen. They say Stephen looked up before he died. Stephen looked up and he seen Jesus at the right hand, he knew I'm going right there with him. See, I see Jesus at the right hand. That's where I'm going. And say Steph, Stephen was a servant. A servant mean a, a servant pretty much mean he was a son. He was a son of God. He was following Jesus' footsteps. Jesus was a servant of all. And so forth, you will have to be. This is not saying you are God, so you can run around thinking I'm a God. I can run around with an ego uh, and, and, and act crazy and get what I want. No, this is about being a God to understand that you are a servant. You are now to take your power and your faith and to build up the ruined cities. You're supposed to build up these communities, help these people, go to these old folks' home, put the, put the, put the word and power and back into these people, get them excited about life again. Whatever they need to be healed, heal them. Heal the sick. Lay hands on them and let God be the truth. Don't sit up there and say, I'm not going to lay hands because I don't believe. Don't let that fear rob you. Lay hands and let God be the truth. Put that all on their head in the name of Jesus and let God be the truth. Either he going to heal them or he ain't. Tell yourself. You don't, you don't, you shut the door. You shut the door. Now, this has been a fun teaching. I always had fun preaching. I think everybody come out and it's like always, if you have any questions at all, you can go to God elex.org that's g-o-d-e-l-e-c-t-s dot org o-r-g and you can come on there and ask any questions we also have prayers of wisdom that I you know I had a lot of people who have prayed them and, they, and, it, and it worked out for them and it worked out for me these are the same prayers that Paul prayed David prayed the Holy Spirit and then, then showed me these prayers we also he also then then you can pray the Bible. The Bible ain't nothing but a coupon book. You see what I'm saying? You can take a piece out the Bible, another piece, and then you can put it together and pray the Bible. You see, it's all faith-based. So the Bible, I, I call it a coupon book. The promises of God is a coupon book. That's like you get a book, you say, I got a big old coupon book that I can save. Well, it's the same thing. I got healing in this book. I don't need to go to the doctor. I got healing right here in this book. I'm, I'm going to I mean, I'm gonna go to the doctor for confirmation if it's something serious. But see, I got healing in this book. You know, you got healing in the book, right there. You know, oh, I got, oh, I got, I got, I got, I need, I, you know, I don't ever want to run out of all. I don't want to never run out of money. I, I got it right there. See, I got that. Go down to Second Kings. Go down to Second Kings chapter two. Uh, I mean Second Kings, yeah, Second Kings chapter four, and say, listen, let me, let me, let me, my all never gonna run out. I got to shut the door. I got to shut the door on the flesh, though. I see all these are just coupon. God said, I will never leave you or forsake you. See, oh, his word is, 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 you know, his word is bond. His word, once he, once he speak it, it's, it's over with. It, it, it can't be changed unless he change it. can't be changed. And so hopefully you learned a lot more this week how fear in different angles and different ways, how fear can put people into bad decision making and how it can hurt your faith. You see how that fear was attacking Moses to put Moses in a bad situation to make terrible decisions. So he was, he, he was, he was coming against God, talking bad to God and getting off on God. So he wanted God, just let me die. Why would you do this to me? See something that God chose him out of all the people in the world. God chose him to lead his people. And God didn't say it was going to be an easy task for him to lead his people. God didn't say his people weren't rebels. But God said he chose him to be his leader, and he was going to be forever known in this book. You see, think about it. It's, it's about, what, 6,000 years? I don't know how old it's been, but but you know something? 
because some people say six, some people say four. So it's just, you know, whatever at this point, uh, even 4,000 plus years, we're still looking at it like this, regardless of it. Moses is still being talked about. The children of, El- the children of Israel, I'm sorry, still being talked about Joshua. These guys that laid down their life and they did a magnificent job to uh, the Holy Spirit did a magnificent job to record and copy these people and to show us their errors as well as their great things. He shows us the errors because the errors, you have to look at a person's weakness because when God tests anyone, he's not looking for your strength. He's looking for your weakness. You see, your strength don't need nothing. It's the weakness is what he's looking for. And so that's why Paul said, I glorify myself in my weakness. Because you know what? Your weakness is what God is looking for. Because, see, your strength is not going to open the door to the devil. Your weakness is. See, the things that you got weakness in are the things you need to stay alert. Staying alert is a very important situation. We're going to have a lesson on staying alert in the next, probably next month or so sometime when we get through all this. But it's just showing you more promising things to come. So stay tuned to Kingdom Justice. You know, we we on, just in case if you new here, <clears throat> I'm sure we have it on there, but we on from Sunday. We on from Sunday to to Wednesday. So that's Sunday to Wednesday at 9 p.m. Central. But today we started early. Today we started early, and we also have a meeting on Saturday out here in Houston, Texas, where um, you can get information on that. Uh, just email us in uh, where you can come out and to the meeting and everything. Or like I said, for other people, if people want to even do uh, – Meetings at Bible studies or, 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 you know, I had people that asked me, hey, can you come to my church and uh, teach, uh, teach at my church? And so, you know, that's something that we can definitely talk about and deal with if you're in the Houston area. And if you're further than Houston and you want me to come preach at your church, you, you know, um, we can talk about that as well. So we didn't have fun here today. And. We are not finished with this teaching. I hope this changed someone's life. I hope someone can take this and the Holy Spirit can open you up to this and expand your knowledge from this and explain these more scriptures because there's more scriptures to go into this than just me putting in here because if I did, it'd be too much. It'd be too many. And so it's so much to go into this and hopefully it can span you and this can sit in your heart and you can go out and preach the same uh, or maybe even add those extra ones to it. And like I said before, um, for people who want to come out and, and uh, donate to God Elect, we appreciate it. We also, as people that usually come out, people come out and they will sow seed. So if you want to sow seed, here's a good place to sow. You will reap. That's God's word. And, you know, um, if you're a person who want to be a partner who say, listen, I like this show. I love what y'all are doing. I want to help y'all push the gospel. Then all y'all have to do is go to God. If either one, just go to GodElects.org. And we have everything that you need on there. Um, you just got to fill out a couple of things or just, you know, um, your first time person, you just got to put in a little information, email. So therefore you won't have to worry about doing that again. Um, you'll be registered and everything and um, you'll be registered and everything like that. So um, th- that's all, that's all we need to do. And if anybody out there need healing, you know, anyone need healing, never shy away from it. Never give up hope. See, that's what happened right there with Moses. Moses wanted to give up hope. See, he wanted to say, I just, just die already. See, don't let that cancer beat up on you. Don't let that, that, uh, that kidney, you need dialysis too, too much. Uh, too, 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 uh, I met a person not so long had needed it, uh, went from two times to three times a week. See, you, you don't need to go through that. See, don't give up hope. I don't care what you're dealing with. Don't give up hope. I don't care how bad it looks. Like I told my dad, I don't care how bad it looks. What you need is a you need is a man of faith. You need someone who believes in this, someone who's walking in the power of God. And I'm not saying that it's other ministers that don't have the power. I'm not saying that no, not by any means. I'm saying you need to find one. You need to find one. You see, you know, you don't need to find one to talk about. I'm just healing. Uh, that person need they ain't got no faith. I can't heal. Jesus healed people without faith. There's such thing called mercy. And it's just such thing called the mercy of God. Jesus understood this. I'm gonna preach on this because I haven't heard anyone in my life preach on this. But there's a such thing called mercy. See anything God can do, you can do. God heal people. Uh when you're waiting on God to heal people, God can heal who he wants, when he wants. So you're waiting on him to heal people. He can heal you. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But he have mercy. So then that mercy, that's what he does. Jesus was able to heal people 
that didn't have any faith because that he took mercy on them. And I'm trying to tell you it's the same thing here. You can take mercy on a person who you want to heal. Jesus said this, and God said this, and God even told me this personally. He said, who you give life to, they should have life. Jesus said the same thing. He testified to this. He told. He said the same thing in the scriptures. He said, who the son give life to, have life. See, so who the son give mercy to, have mercy. We got to start seeing things the way God said. God has, give, God has opened up the door. He's saying, this is your inheritance. Boy, come in here and go get it. Use it. So don't don't shy from healing. Don't run away from healing. And we're going to talk more about the mercy teaching. I'm going to do that at a later date. But and I know it's something that need to get out because there's a lot of the devil got a lot of this fake fake stuff going on. If you ain't got this fake, you can't do that. No healing. See, God showed me that's not completely true there. So we got to We got to We got to go into that. See, there's something wrong with that. So we're going to go into that teaching. And um, so, you know, how can the people believe if there ain't no one preaching it? You see? So what I want you to do out there, if you have any family problems, marriage problems, just go ahead and, um, you know, send your prayer request in. Email us. We'll get back to you. We'll pray for you. We, uh, You know, all of us here, God elect, will pray. And um, I believe that whatever's happening to you, you having demons attacking you, your loved ones, just come on in and pray. Uh, ask for prayer, and we will be here. This is Courtney Jones. Blessing and peace be to you. And remember, if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it is your gift. You're supposed to have the inner and the outer, but I got a commercial coming up that's going to tell you more about that. Just in case you have any questions, I have a teaching on how to be born again. And you can find this also on the website. Um, you can find on the radio show here too if you go through the list, and we also can find a radio. Uh, the radio, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, you can also find the website. So you can find on both of them if you go on there, and you can find how to be born again the biblically way, the way of God, the way of the Word. So Courtney Jones, and I am out. Hey everyone, we're going to take a quick commercial break that is sponsored by God Lake Ministry. Hey everybody, it's Courtney Jones from God Elect Ministry. And for all the people who want to receive Jesus into their heart of their Lord and Savior right now, I want you to quote something with me. Now we're, going to, we're going to go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It's Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And it says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has risen him from the dead, you will be saved. And also go forward and say this. We go further. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confessing, confession is made unto salvation. Now, if you're a person right now who you believe, you receive Jesus in your heart right now, this axiom in your heart right now, you also, you also believe that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, he's been risen from the dead, you also believe that he is Lord. Now, as you just had quoted that scripture, I want you to understand something. It's something called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is a gift that is given to everyone who believes this. Everyone who believes that Jesus has been risen from the dead, that his blood washes us clean. He is our Savior, and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. As you confess that, I want you to understand that you can ask God right now for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it's given to every believer. Every believer who believes this, you you are you are required to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is given to you as a gift. So remember, as you quote that, as you receive Jesus in your Lord, your Lord and Savior right now in your heart, as you quote this scripture, also ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.